Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I want to talk about programming languages in the context of microservices and how much their performance actually matters. Every now and then I'm part of some discussion where someone will talk about an amazing programming language that will do double or triple the processing that I'm doing currently with my programming language or someone else is doing with her current programming language and they're going to try to sort of force you to use that instead. And I feel like discussions like this are focusing on the tree and they're missing the forest. And in this video, I'm going to try to explain that with clear graphs to understand why performance in microservices just on the language level itself doesn't actually matter that much. If you like this type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's take an example here. Let's say I have a queue here, a message queue. So some sort of queue that has messages in it. And then I have some service here. I'm going to call it S1 written in C sharp. And over here I have a database. Let's say it's a NoSQL database, maybe managed, maybe something like a DynamoDB or a Cosmos DB, highly scalable. And we've done great data modeling everywhere in this flow. And here we're consuming messages. We're transforming them in some way in the application, and then we're saving it in DynamoDB for something else to use. Your typical microservice scenario. Now, let's give some numbers here. First here, this reading, let's say, will take 5 milliseconds. And it will take 5 milliseconds because it is an I.O. operation, there is some latency there, and it is part of the end-to-end -end flow, so I have to measure it. And then this write to that database is 10 milliseconds, maybe because we have a globally distributed version of that database and we have some strong consistency on our write, so it will take 10 milliseconds. And then the processing in the application, in the C-sharp code, is very optimized and it will do that in 4 milliseconds. So the full flow from end to end here is 19 milliseconds. Now, if this was single-threaded, it would mean that we can do 52 RPS requests per second. However, we have some multi-threading in there and we're using a way they sync for concurrency. So let's say we can process 300 requests per second. Now someone comes in and says, oh, I can't believe you're using C-sharp. C-sharp is so slow. We have to do this in Rust now because Rust is cool. Okay, you pause development and you allocate resources in changing your application to do Rust. And maybe not just this one, but maybe everything to do Rust. So in this context now, this is using Rust, which comes with Rust SDKs, Rust performance, Rust model, Rust everything. And this is still five milliseconds because again, IO call and maybe the SDK for saving it to Dynamo in Rust is a bit more optimized. So this is doing eight milliseconds now. And Rust happens to process this specific um, workload internally in double the time. So two milliseconds. So now the full flow is 15 milliseconds, which again, single threaded means a specific number, but let's say because of the concurrency model and everything, Rust can now do this in 400 RPS. Now, here's a question for you. Was that a wise decision? Yes, you gained 100 RPS, but was it a smart decision? Why do I say that? Well, let's go here on the side and let's have another example. Let's say I have a user here and this user calls some API and that's a REST API. And that's important because it is a stateless API, meaning every request is self-contained. And this is a C-sharp API. And this API is calling a database here of the same fashion, NoSQL database distributed and highly scalable. And then this call takes four milliseconds and whatever is happening in here takes one millisecond. So the full flow end-to-end -end is five milliseconds. That's the user experience. Now let's say that this API, the single instance, can do a thousand RPS, so a thousand requests per second. How do you scale this? Well, it's actually very easy. Let me just remove those numbers because they're not that important. So one instance, a thousand RPS. If I grab this now, all I need to do is duplicate it. So I'm going to create three instances of the exact same code base and they will all again point to the same database. But the user will no longer be pointing directly to that API. Instead, what's going to happen is the user will point to a traffic manager, maybe a load balancer here, and then that load balancer will fan out the requests appropriately to achieve optimal scale. And usually, depending on the load balancer, this type of scale, the scale out process, will be almost linear. You might lose some requests, but it should be around 3000 RPS because each instance can do a thousand and it's multiplied by the running instances. Now, this is also applicable here. 
this message queue can handle competing consumers. Meaning if I want to do 900 RPS with this C sharp version, then all I need to do is make sure my processing in here is stateless and run three versions of this application. Obviously the Rust version can do almost the same with two, meaning I run less pods in Kubernetes or ECS or whatever. But those applications are doing so minimal work that they're very cheap to run as microservices. And that cost is almost always significantly cheaper than re-architecting everything to use a different language. As long as your service can scale out, you don't have to worry about the language performance itself. That's why something like Instagram, which is built in Django, which is in Python, which is considered slow as a language, can still scale very, very nicely because they've designed it in a way that it can scale out. So the language itself in microservices doesn't really matter. As long as your application can support as a long running service, competing consumers or statelessness in general as concepts, you don't need to worry about it. The best language you can choose is the one you enjoy writing. Now, obviously you could potentially achieve more with less instances, but it just isn't cost effective most of the time. So why would you do that? Another thing is that your flow is almost always load leveled by the IO operations and not by the performance of the application itself. The application is itself and the reason why lambdas are becoming more and more popular nowadays is because the code is so minimal that what you're doing is almost always going to be pretty fast no matter what language you use. You know the, the call will still have to go through the wire and that's going to be the slow part. Now again that depends on what you're doing but usually what you have is an input maybe an API request maybe a message maybe an event from Kafka Kinesis whatever you take that you transform it in some way maybe you call another dependency which would make this even slower by the way and more irrelevant in the grand scheme of things and then you save that somewhere, whether that is you publish it into another message bus, you save it into a database, you do something with that data through the wire. So that's why I say that this discussion is kind of pointless because anything will scale as long as you design it properly. Data modeling and consumption model is way more important in my opinion than the language that you're gonna use. Yes, there are cases where you wanna use maybe the most optimal thing ever, but if you have built a business on something that already works and you have this much knowledge inside the company, why would you go out of your way to throw that out of the window to just satisfy someone who wants to use something just because they think they're cool or even if it is actually better performing than something else. This is why when people ask me, hey Nick, what programming language should I learn next? My answer is always the one you enjoy writing. This video shouldn't discourage you from going out of your way to learn new languages. I do believe you should be learning new languages all the time just to see how they handle maybe some functional elements, the nullability in those languages, maybe some design choices and see how you could potentially adapt the good parts of other languages into your own language. But performance itself in the context of microservices, I don't think is a strong enough point to just go out of your way to learn something completely new. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.